boys and girls, I'm so glad you're with me today. I hope you had a wonderful and restful weekend and you're ready for another week of learning. Let's get started with the date. So last time we were together, it was Friday. We weren't here Saturday. We weren't here Sunday. So today is Monday. It was the first on Friday. So Saturday was the second. Sunday was the third. And today is the fourth. So let's take a look at the whole date. Oh, it's May, remember. The whole date is May 4th, 2020. It is Monday. The short form of the date is 5 dash 4 dash 20. So may the fourth be with you. Let's take a look at how many days we've been in school. On Friday, we had been in school for 163 days. We have three ones in the ones place and we need to add one more for today, right? Now we don't have three. Now we have, oops, I forgot to get my four. Okay, so we have four ones now. We still have one group of 100, still have six groups of 10, and now four ones, and that makes 164. We've been in school for 164 days. That's crazy. Okay, let's take a look at our math problem for the day. There it is. Okay, go ahead and write it down. Solve it and come back when you're ready. Ready? Okay. So, I hope you're paying attention to the sign. What operation does the sign tell us to do? Well, it's a plus sign, so that means we are using addition. And we always start in the ones place. And in the ones place, we have a six and a four. Six and four are partners in. 10. That's right. So if we put 6 and 4 together, we get 10. In the number 10, what number is in the ones place? A 0. And what number ooh, And what number is in the tens place? A 1. So we regroup it into the tens place, right? Now we've got to add up everything that's in the tens place. We move on to the tens place and we add all of that up. 4 plus 2 and one more. 4 and 2 make four, five, six, and one more makes seven. So our total is 70. How did you do on that one? I'm sure you did great. All right, let's move on. We've got a math lesson today, so I'll see you there. Okay, boys and girls, so we are on topic 14. Remember, we're talking about measurement. We are on lesson 14-2, compare by capacity. Do you think you know what capacity means? We'll talk about that in just a minute. Let me give you the directions for the solve and share. It says, Martha has two cups. She wants to use the cup that holds more. How can she find out which cup holds more? Glue the cup that holds less on the left side of the work mat and the cup that holds more on the right. Okay. So maybe you can kind of figure out what capacity means now. Capacity is a measurement of how much something can hold, okay? I don't have the little cups that this solvent share, that would go with this solvent share. So what we're going to do is just draw cups. We're going to draw a cup that holds more on the right side and a cup that holds less on the left side. So if I'm drawing a cup that holds less, it should be maybe just a small cup, right? Like maybe my coffee mug. Yeah. And if I wanted to draw a cup that holds more, I might need to make it a nice, big, tall glass. There we 
we go. So do you think that this glass, this cup, holds more than this one? Definitely, it's much bigger and it has more room to hold stuff, right? Good, I hope you drew your cups too. They don't have to be exactly the same as mine, but this one needs to be able to hold more than the one on the left, okay? Let's go ahead and move on. Okay. At the bottom it says, have students draw a circle around the cup that holds more and mark an X on the cup that holds less or underline the cups if they hold the same amount. Okay, so if we look at number one, we can see there are two of the same type of cups, right? But one is much bigger than the other. This one is smaller, so it has to hold less than this one. And this one is bigger, so it has to hold more. So we circle this one. Whoa. It's not quite a circle, but it'll do. Let's take a look at number two. These two cups look exactly the same. They look like they could hold the same amount. So I'm going to underline them. Easy peasy? Good. Let's move on. Okay, same thing. It says half students draw a circle around the container that holds more and an X, mark an X on the container that holds less or underline them if they hold the same amount. Let's look at these big pots. Which one do you think holds more? I think this blue one is much bigger than the green one. So it has to be the one that holds more. The green one is smaller, so it holds less. Okay. On number four, looks like teacups. One is bigger than the other. Which one is the smaller one, the one that holds less? Tell me, what colors are they? The blue and green one is smaller, right? It definitely holds less than this yellow or orange one, right? So we circle the bigger one, the one that holds more, and we put an X on that one that holds less. Number five. Those look the same to me. What do you think? I think that they would hold the same amount and we're supposed to underline if they hold the same amount. Good. Number six. Looks like pitchers for tea or juice or something, right? Which one do you think holds more? Which one should we circle? The pink one. I agree. It's definitely bigger than the blue one. The blue one is smaller. It definitely holds less and the pink one, so we're gonna cross that one out. This is pretty easy, right? Let's move on. Okay, number seven. Looks like pails. Which one is, which one should we put an X on? What do you think? Definitely this orange one, right? It holds less. So the blue one needs to be circled because it holds more. It has a greater capacity, right? Can you say the word capacity? Capacity, good. It means how much something can hold. Let's take a look at number eight, two sandboxes. Which one should we circle this time? The one with the black outline or the one with the red outline? Definitely the one with the red outline, right? It's much bigger. It definitely can hold more sand than the one with the black outline. Good work. Okay, let's take a look at number nine. Looks like trash cans. What do you think? Which one should we circle? Which one holds more? 
neither, right? They're exactly the same size. They can hold the same amount. So we're going to underline them. Good work. Number 10 says, have students draw a container that holds less than the container shown. This looks like a big pail or bucket. And we need to draw something that holds less. It doesn't have to be another pail. It doesn't have to be another bucket. It doesn't have to be the same as this. It just has to be a container that holds less. So what if we drew another mug? A coffee mug definitely holds less than a big pail like that, right? I think so. Good. So did we draw something that holds less than this container? We sure did. That was so easy. You guys are so smart. I want you, for, during this lesson, I want you to remember the word capacity and what it means. Capacity is the measurement of how much something can hold. Okay? Great work on that today. It was nice and quick. You guys are so smart. Let's go ahead and move on to phonics. I'll see you there. So it's Monday, that means we have new sounds for the week, okay? We have some new variant vowels, they are vowel teams, that say oo and u, okay? EW can say the oo sound or the u sound, okay? It says oo like in drew and it says u like in you. Do you hear the U in there? And skew. So we can say oo and you. U-E also says oo and you. It can say oo like glue or it can say you like Q or dual. Oh, actually, dual says oo, doesn't it? Do you hear oo? I hear oo, so let's fix that. Dual says ooh, glue says ooh, and Q says you. Okay, let's look at the last one. UI. It says ooh, okay? This one doesn't say you, or at least I couldn't find any words that use the UI sound to make the U sound, okay? It just says ooh, like in juice, suit, and fruit. Okay, so those are some more difficult vowel teams and variant vowels. Um, they're definitely probably end of first grade work. So this is something that you're going to be ahead on. So let's, let's stay focused so that we make sure that you can learn this before you go to first grade, so you just are awesome there, okay? So remember, EW and UE say ooh and you, and UI says ooh, okay? So if you see a word that has those letter combinations, it's okay to try both sounds, okay? Just like we do during phonics, and we'll do that some more when we read our words on the smart board, okay? I hope I didn't confuse you, but I think after this week, it'll be a lot more clear. All right, let's go start with phonics. Okay, now that you know our sounds for the week, let's get started with our phonics lesson. The first thing we're gonna do is tap out words, as always, okay? The first word is treat. What's the word? Treat, fingers up. T, er, e, Treat. How many sounds? Four sounds. Arm sweep it. T, er, e, t. Treat. Good job. The next word is frown. What's the word? Frown. Fingers up. Er, ow, n. Frown. How many sounds? Four sounds. Again, arm sweep it. Er, ow, n. Frown. Good job. The next word is 
candle. What's the word? Candle. Fingers up. K a n d o. Candle. How many sounds? Five sounds. Arm sutra. K a n d o. Candle. Good job. The next word is trick. What's the word? Trick. Fingers up. T er i k. Trick. How many sounds? Four sounds. Arm sweep it. T er i k. Trick. Good job. The last word is hail. What's the word? Hail. Fingers up. P a o. Hail. How many sounds? Just three. Arm sweep it. A O hail. Good work. Okay, let's get to work on these digraphs. Here we go. Remember, I want you to say the sound first, and then I'll say it. Okay. Shh. G. J. N. Ng, n, ch, w, r, qua. Ed, d, or t. Good job. Okay, time for vowel tunes, R control vowels, diphthongs, variant vowels, all those, okay? The first two are our new sounds, okay? U or U. U or U. R. Er, e a i a or u or u er ow or o e I A Oi Oi A E E A Er Ah, ow, or u, uh, or u. Ah, o, er, e, or i, a. And O. Good work. All right. I don't think I'm going to add any more new sight words today. We've got a pretty big stack, and our, our sounds this week are kind of hard. So we'll just keep working on the ones that we have now, okay? Here we go. Chick. Chin. With. Ship. Take, give, graph, bus, then, 
them much chip sun us must this bath small rich pitch shell when tenth match whip shop run put jump chop wear fun thick that eat which fish but and one good work all right let's go move on to the smart board i'll see you there Okay, let's work on some of these words that have the oo and u sound, okay? So remember, if you say, if you see e, w, or u, e, it could either be the oo sound or the u sound. So if we're not sure, we'll try both, okay? Here we go. What do you think, oo or u? Let's try oo. Oo, foo, no. Let's try you. You. Phew. Good job. Okay. S k. Oo. No. S k. You. Skew. Good job. Okay. Ch. Oo. Chew. Good. T. Er. Oo. True. Good job. O, u, blue. K, o, u, clue. K, u, ku. No, let's try you. K, u, q. Good. G, o, u, glue. Nice work. O, U, blue. Well, there's blue here and there's blue here. They're spelled differently. Do they mean the same thing? No. These are called homophones. They sound the same, but they have different meaning meanings. This one here, blue, B L U E, is like the color blue. This one, B L E W, is like he blew out his birthday candles. Blew to blow. Okay? Good. Now you know these words. On your own now, okay? Think. Few. Think. Skew. Think. Chew. Think. True. Think, blue, think, clue, think, cue, think, glue, think, blue. Great job. Okay, let's read them nice and quick. Here we go. Few, skew, chew, true, blue, clue, 
blue, and blue. Okay, let's read some of these ooh and you words in some sentences. Here we go. The, think, Q, think, stick, is, think, blue. The Q stick is blue. The Q stick is blue. Good job. Let's sweep this sentence. Here we go. The Q stick is blue. The Q stick is blue. The Q stick is blue. Great work. Okay, next sentence. I think it's a popcorn word. Have a think few think true pals. I have a few true pals. I have a few true pals. Let's sweep it. I have a few true pals. I have a few true pals. I have a few true pals. Great work. Okay, let's go write some of these words. Okay, let's write some ooh and you words. Ready? The first sound in the first word is g. O. And the last sound is u. Okay, remember, we're not working with o o. It's either going to be e w or u e. And I'll give you a hint. This one is a vowel team, two vowels. Got it? Okay, let's write the word glue. Oh, I just told you what the word is. You were supposed to tell me. The word is glue, right? Go, ooh, glue. Good. Let's write it together. What do we hear first? G. O. Ooh, and I said it's the vowel team. Which one is a vowel team? Two vowels. U, E. U, E is a vowel team. E, W says ooh, but it's not a vowel team because W is not a vowel, right? This one is a vowel team. Glue. Good job. Okay, below the word glue is the word screw. Screw. What am I doing? I'm supposed to be giving you the sounds. Okay, then you write the word screw. S-k-r-r. Screw. Four sounds. S-k-r-r. Got it? Okay. Well, now we'll write it together. Er, ooh, which one do you think it is? It's not the vowel team. It's E W this time. Screw. Good job. Below the word screw. I'll give you the sounds now. Ready? The first sound is D. And it is a vowel team. And the last sound? O. O. What's the word? Dual. Dual. Good. Let's write it together. D. Ooh, and it was a vowel team, right? O. Dual. Good job. Okay. On to the other side. Now I'll give you the word. We'll tap it out and you write it, okay? The word is chew. What's the word? 
Chew. Fingers up. Ch. Ooh, only two sounds. Ch. Ooh. Two sounds. You can do this. Do you need a hint? It's not enveloping. Got it? Okay. Let's write it together. What do you hear first? A digraph, right? What sound? Ch. What says ch? Ch. Ch. Ooh. And not the vowel team, so it must be ew. Ch. Good job. The next word is clue. What's the word? Clue. Fingers up. K. O. Ooh. Three sounds. Clue. Go ahead and write it. Do you need a hint? Okay. It's very, it's spelled very similarly to glue. Got it? Okay. Let's write it together. Clue. What do you hear first? K. You know, it has to be a C because there's an O after it, right? And there is no KL blend, just CL. Cl. Ooh. This is very similar to glue. So we're going to use that vowel team. Good. And I forgot to check our sounds on chew and we go back and do that. So. O, oh, ooh, three sounds just like we said on clue. Let's check chu, ch, ooh, two sounds just like we said. Good. Okay. Below clue, we're going to write the word stew. Like I ate some stew. Fingers up. S, t, ooh, stew. How many sounds? Three sounds. Three sounds. Stew. I'll give you a hint. It's not the vowel team. It's not the vowel team. Got it? Okay, let's write the word stew. S -t Ooh. Not the vowel team, so it's got to be this one. Stew. Let's check our sounds. Ooh, one, two, three, three sounds. Perfect, good work. Ready for your sentence? The sentence is, you need to chew your stew. You need to chew your stew. You need to chew your stew. Six words. You need to chew your stew. Stew. So we've got chew and stew. Go ahead and write the sentence. Come back when you're ready. Okay, are we ready? Let's do this together. So first word that you hear is you. How do you spell you? Y-O-U. That's a popular word. And we're starting at the beginning of a sentence, so we need capital Y. Good. Y-O-U. U spells you. You need, I think this is a popular word too. Either way, it's very easy to spell. Mm, e, vowel team that says e. E, e. You need to chew. And we've already written the word chew. There it is. So we'll just put it in our sentence. You need to chew your, that's a popcorn word, Y O U R. You need to chew your stew. Period? Or exclamation mark, maybe your mom's saying, You need to chew your stew. Don't just swallow it whole, right? You need to chew your stew. Let's make sure we have all of our words. We said we need to have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. You need to chew your stew. I think we got all the words. Let's swoop it. You need to chew 
your stew. You need to chew your stew. One more time. You need to chew your stew. Great work. I'm sorry. I was so confused today. I messed up a lot, but that's okay. We got it done, right? <laughs> I make mistakes sometimes. You know that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to reading a story. I hope you enjoy this one. See you there. Okay, so I have something new to introduce to you. Um, last week, we focused a lot on the life cycle of a butterfly. This week, I want to focus on the water cycle. Take a minute and think about what you think the water cycle is. You know that a cycle is something that goes around and around over and over and over again, right? Just like a butterfly, just like we learned, right? The butterfly starts out as an, as an egg, hatches into a caterpillar, forms a chrysalis, then becomes a butterfly, then that butterfly lays new eggs and the cycle continues and continues, right? The water cycle is kind of similar in a lot of ways. It's definitely a cycle. So let's get reading and we will learn exactly what Earth's water cycle is all about. This book is called Earth's Water Cycle by Robin Nelson. Have you seen a summer rain? Where does the rain come from? Of course we've seen rain, right? All the water on Earth is part of the water cycle. A cycle is a pattern that happens over and over, just like we talked about with butterflies, right? The sun warms the water on Earth. Water rises into the air. How does water rise? Hmm. The water has turned into a gas. This part of the cycle is called evaporation. Most of the time you can't even see evaporation at all. Maybe you leave a glass of water on a windowsill or even anywhere out in the house and if you leave it there for a couple days you'll see that there's less water in it than when you left it. That's because the water has evaporated. This evaporation we can see, right? This is like fog. That means the water here that's accumulated has risen and formed a gas and it's rising. Okay, so let's see what happen ne happens next. The water in the air cools. The water forms tiny drops. This part of the cycle is called condensation. So after the water evaporates, it goes up, right? It goes up when it evaporates. When that happens, it cools down and all the water, the water comes together, it condenses and it forms drops. It's called condensation. So if you look up in the sky, you can see condensation. The cloud, a cloud that you might see in the sky is the condensation that happens from evaporation. The drops form clouds. See, I told you. The clouds get heavy with water. These light, fluffy clouds in a blue sky, there's not a whole lot of, well, there's a lot of water in them, but not enough water to where it needs to come out. These storm clouds are clouds that have gathered so much water that eventually it's gonna, the water's gonna need to come out. It rains. That's how the water comes out. The rain falls on land, streams, and rivers back into the places where it first began. The water will warm and the water cycle starts again. So take a look at this um, diagram, Earth's water cycle. So the water evaporates by the warmth of the sun, it forms <clears throat> clouds as condensation, and then it has to come down. And I don't know why that um, stage isn't labeled, but that's called precipitation. Okay, so the water here that's accumulated on Earth evaporates. Can you say evaporates? 
evaporates. Great job. <clears throat> and the sun's heat is what makes it do that. Once it's in the air, it forms clouds as condensation. Can you say condensation? Condensation, good job. When those clouds get real heavy with water, it has to come down, right? That is called precipitation. Can you say precipitation? Precipitation, good job. And when the water comes back down, it falls back into lakes and streams and oceans where the cycle starts all over again. It says, learn more about the water cycle. <clears throat> Rain can fall onto land. The water will soak into the ground. Someday, this water will flow into a stream, river, or lake. It may evaporate, or the water may keep moving until it reaches the ocean. The water in the ocean will evaporate. It will condense and form clouds. The clouds will get heavy. It will rain. The waters, the Earth's water cycle goes on and on. Cool. Water cycle facts. All living things need water. The water on Earth is very old. It's the same water the dinosaurs once drank. What this means is that the water that's on Earth is the only water that's ever been on Earth and that will ever be on Earth because the Earth is, con is contained. We have an atmosphere that keeps whatever's in here, in here. So all the water that the Earth has on it is the water that the Earth started with. And it's the water that will stay on Earth. We won't get new water. What we have here is all we have. Water in the air is called water vapor. More water vapor is in warm air than in cold air. Sometimes warm air with a lot of vapor can make you feel sticky. This is called humidity. So I don't know if you've ever heard that word, but it's when the air feels really wet. Sometimes after it rains and it's warm soon after, the water, the water begins to evaporate very quickly and you can kind of feel the wetness in the air. It's called humidity. Can you say humidity? Good job. A dark cloud has more water in it than a light cloud. We talked about that when we saw those pictures of the clouds, right? The clouds you see in a blue sky that are nice and light and fluffy and white have less water and it doesn't necessarily need to come out. But a dark cloud has a lot more water. It's dark because the water is so condensed, so packed tight, and it needs to come out. Snow falls from clouds when the air is very cold. We'll talk more about that another day. But this is just a beginning to get you introduced to the water cycle. I hope you like it. I'm going to leak the Dr. Binox video here. So I'm going to say bye now. And I hope you have a great and wonderful day. If you have time after this, check out that Dr. Binox video. All you have to do is click on this link, okay? All right. Have a wonderful day. I love you and I miss you. Bye-bye.